Right, welcome back to another episode of Well Testing the Tips, where I, as an average golfer, test out some of the tips that I found useful to me from fellow YouTubers. Those fellow YouTubers, however, are golf professionals and do a lot in terms of tuition videos. I love watching these things. I love trying new little things, but they don't all work. But this is something I came across from a video that's probably been taken from back in the, I would say, late 80s. It was from, well, my golfing hero back in the day, which was Nick Faldo, or Sir Nick Faldo, as he's now known. And uh, he was very much into swing mechanics. Remodeled his swing at this time. And he talks about a, a set position that he got himself in, which was almost like a checkpoint to make sure he started his swing off correctly and was on plane. I've been using it quite a lot and in the last six or seven rounds and a number of them have been seen on camera on this channel a lot of you have asked what am i doing where is this sort of pause position that i've been adopting that has helped me no end i've played some really good golf and i'm finding it first of all to be a really good checkpoint so you simply need a club as an alignment stick a golf ball and a club of choice i'm only going to use a nine iron that's where i'm going to start off and i'm going to, i would progress this through the set so start off with shorter irons as I get more comfortable with it you see me hitting some hybrids right now using the same principle so what is it I'm doing what is this set position that you've seen me adopt well it's quite simple it's a simple wrist hinge right at the beginning of the swing so no movement just a simple wrist hinge that wrist hinge along uh, has got to ensure that both your club and the club that's on the floor remain parallel to each other and you'll also see the club face is also in a parallel position to that club that's lying along the floor so straight away that gets me a very quick checkpoint that i'm in a good position there and i say a good position because what we're going to do now is from this position we're simply going to rotate now i can't see the top of my backswing but i'm assured by sir nick that when we do this rotation at the top of this swing our club face is also in a good position Now what you will notice in this sequence of shots is my failure to create the wrist hinge that is necessary when I actually attempt to execute this on a full swing. The wrist hinge should see the club face reach a parallel position before the shoulders start to turn and clearly needs work on. And why if you're able to, always film your swing to see what is actually happening rather than what you think. Although I will say that even by attempting the early wrist hinge, it still produced some very positive results. So, the way I started doing this was by simply getting into a set position, rotating and then hitting the golf ball. So from that fixed position, so no fluidity to the swing if you like, that's what I'm going to attempt to do now whilst the camera's on. You've seen me hit a few with the camera, port, uh, camera before we started. So into that position, turn and rotate. I cannot believe, first of all, how crisp the strike has been. I feel like what it's doing is something that I really struggle with and that's squaring the club face at impact. And that again is because of the club face position through the swing at least that's my interpretation of it. And I've really hit the ball solid with it. Now, for me, one of the problems I have is many of you will know, when I'm in this position in my natural swing, that's more like this. So hands behind me, club head way behind me, then I make a cast in motion to sort of get back on plane. And that's really, you know, there's a lot of error possibility within that movement. So where it's worked really well for me, is getting in a position that doesn't get me behind myself, doesn't get me trapped there into the top of the backswing. And then it's just about releasing the club. I've thought about nothing else with the actual follow through. The only thing I would be mindful of from my own personal experience is that when I'm coming down without the commitment to get through the shot to this left hand side, there's a tendency for me to just have the club face a little bit open and leak the ball out to the right. You've perhaps just seen it on the shot that I hit there. Whilst I was really happy with it, and we are aiming, you can see from the uh, alignment stick, we are aiming right side of this fairway. That's the only issue I've got, just a little bit of a slight open club face and just letting it drift off. 
where it really becomes a lot more positive is from this position is making sure I'm clearing the left side so that's one bit that I would add in for me that I found personally but you know what I've always said on this channel testing the tips is all about breaking down what I see and uh, relaying that information in a very simple and straightforward interpretation I hope you've understood what I am trying to explain dead dead simple so I'm not going to waffle on any more than that just get yourself to the T get yourself a club head down on the floor get that club head into a parallel position right from the get-go make the full rotation and let the club do the rest and it virtually stays on plane on its own as long as you sort of uh, well allow it to right that's me done that was simple enough wasn't it it's been working for me it's been working now for six or seven rounds go and give it a try for yourself see what happens it increases the power in terms of the snap in um, and and that wrist hinge itself everything about it has been a very much a positive move for me and i hope it works for you